Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar today brought to you by New Readers Press. It's pretty hot out there across the country. I hope it's not too bad where you are. It is uh, really beautiful today here in Portland, Oregon. Um, a little bit about New Readers Press for over 50 years. Educators have trusted us to provide industry leading instructional tools that are proven to help adult learners succeed. Uh, my name is Dan Helms. I'm with New Readers Press. We have Drew Robinson with us today from Learning Upgrade. New Readers Press is a full solution provider of both print and digital curriculum resources for adult education. We offer solutions for every level of adult ed, adult literacy, ESL, adult basic education, high school equivalency, and even workforce readiness. And one of the reasons we're able to provide such a comprehensive array of resources is because of our very valued partnerships. And one of these very important partnerships is with Learning Upgrade. So Drew today, who's with us, is the sales director at Learning Upgrade. He handles customer service efforts, including the training of thousands of teachers and learners to use Learning Upgrade's technology to not only produce measurable skill gains, but ultimately to change the lives of our adult learners. So tell us more, Drew, take it away. Thanks, Dan. Uh, my name is Drew with Learning Upgrade, as Dan mentioned. Today, we're gonna be going over one of our latest brand new courses, and so that's gonna be financial literacy. Last night, uh, last week, if you had a chance to join, we were uh, launching our citizenship upgrade. And so we're launching a lot of new courses really in this new test prep job skills. For those that have used learning upgrade in the past, you'll be familiar with our English upgrade track. And so that's been in use in adult ed for um, about a decade now, as well as our math and our GED high set test prep. So, you know, Today I'll be covering financial literacy. It'll be an introduction to the new course. It'll be a take a look at the lessons, um, how we develop the course. And then at the end, we'll be talking about how it fits in into the overall learning upgrade ecosystem. Everybody attending today, uh, you'll be able to get a free learning upgrade pilot uh, if you've never used learning upgrade before. If you already have a learning upgrade license, financial literacy will be available to all of your students now. And so I'll be going over how you can get that added to your current students, as well as for teachers, admins, tutors, how you can utilize the teacher whiteboard component if you'd like to use our financial literacy course for whole class lessons or one-on-one -on -one instruction. Uh, so before we get into the presentation, I know everyone's pretty much a Zoom pro these days, but if you do have questions, I just ask that you use the Q&A for that it really helps us keep track of the questions as they come in. And then we can also see which questions have been answered. I'm joined by my teammate, Hanin here. And so she'll be answering a lot of those questions. So again, it just really helps me if you use the Q&A for questions and that'll be where uh, Hanin can answer those. And then for those that are uh, you know, being asked multiple times or if I see, see they're still there, I'll be able to take a break every now and again to answer additional questions. For the chat, uh, when you see that, that's where you'll see uh, links being posted. You'll see that Dan just uh, mentioned the QR code in the bottom left. And so that's where you're gonna see if you'd like to sign up for that learning upgrade pilot, just scan the QR code, it'll take you to the form that you need. We'll also be posting direct links to the pilot form. So don't worry about trying to find it now. Anything that we mention as far as links or documents will be added to the chat. So to get started in the chat as well, um, at the very end, I'll be talking about how uh, programs like yours and around others around the world are using learning circles with WhatsApp. Um, so as an example, I created a, uh, a WhatsApp group for our webinar today. And so if you do have WhatsApp on your desktop, you can click on that and join the WhatsApp group. If you're on a mobile device, you can click on that and it'll take you into the WhatsApp group but we can also share the links, documentation, recording, everything there. And that way you get a feel of what it's like for your students uh, for a learning circle, um, for you know working on financial literacy and other courses. So with that, um, I'll be able to turn my video off here. Just wanted to turn it on so you could uh, put a face with a name and say hello. And I'll be turning it off and that way we get a clean recording. So for those that aren't in attendance today, 
they'll be able to see the full slides uh, without the video popping up over that. Uh, and so with that, we will get started. So I want to cover a brief outline just so you kind of know what's coming. So to start out, we'll just do a brief introduction on Learning Upgrade. That's for any of you who maybe have used other programs, maybe you've heard of Learning Upgrade and aren't 100% sure of who we are and what we do. After that, I'll be covering Financial Literacy in Whole. So that's our new course, 30 Lessons covers every financial literacy standard every student would ever want to know about, as well as a lot of new ones. And so we see a lot of our students, kids, family members taking on additional roles uh, to earn extra money. And so one of the big things that we, we see not covered in a lot of the uh, you know, print materials for financial literacy is the concept of you know, what is a self-proprietor? You know, what does it mean to make money for yourself? What does it mean to set up your own business? And how do you go about that? So we're not just going to cover the standard topics like earning, saving, um, you know, insurance, uh, things like that. We're also going to cover a lot of new ones, things like fintech, mobile payments, mobile finance, and then quite a few in the small business. So I'll be covering all of that. From there, we'll get into how do you uh, prepare students with the app. And so that's going to be brief. We tend to cover more of this in the follow-up training. So for those of you that already have a license, you've probably gone through a training with someone on our team or with somebody at New Readers Press like Rachel Buddy. And I'll just be covering over some of the options. So how do we get students onboarded? How do we get them enrolled in the appropriate course? If they start out with our English track, and so we'll find that for English learners, in order to get into our financial literacy, it's gonna require an NRS four or five level. So they might need to start with our English first, build up their English skills, and then they can get into the job skills track. So I'll be showing you how you have students take an assessment, improve their English all the way up to full proficiency, and then get into our job skills. After that, we'll cover deployment models. And so that's really gonna be on a focus on traditional adult ed, adult schools, community colleges, libraries, literacy centers, uh, but if you are with an organization that might have a more unique um, set of needs, maybe you have some uh, questions about custom deployment models, no problem at all. We do that all the time. Uh, we do work, you know, mostly in traditional adult ed and traditional K-12, but we also work with nonprofits and NGOs around the world, uh, serving thousands of refugees in different countries. So we've really, um, you know, leaned into our, our development on the learning management system to make sure any program can provide learning upgrade uh, to individuals wherever they may be. And then finally, we'll cover you know, getting started. And so what does it look like to get started with your pilot? And uh, you know, how does the training work as you move on from there? So again, I'm Drew Robinson based out of Los Angeles, uh, joined today uh, by Hanin and Vinod. So any questions that you have, again, put those in the Q&A and they'll be able to get those answered for you. So, Getting into the brief intro on learning upgrade, you know, at our core, our focus is on providing life-changing education to every single learner uh, around the globe. And so the way we do that is making it mobile. And so we want to meet students wherever they may be. So when in the classroom, that may be in a computer lab, a smartphone, a tablet, a Chromebook cart, essentially any web-enabled device, students are going to have access to our full range of English courses, which can take a refugee that's pre-literate, no exposure to English, non-literate in their own first language, bring them up to full proficiency in English. We have the same for math. So we can take a student who is just learning numbers and upskill them all the way until they're fully proficient in algebra and ready for high school equivalency. They can take our GED test prep and pass that. And then once they've gone through our English and math, now they're ready for our job skills. And so that's where we have digital literacy, where we can provide your students all of the skills required for the current economy and job force. We have work life skills. And so that's really where we're gonna focus in on those soft skills, interviewing, how you present yourself, how you engage with individuals at work, work ethic, integrity, honesty. So we cover all of those softer work life skills to optimize their success once they do transition from your classroom into a workplace. And then our newest course, which we'll be covering today, which is financial literacy. 
So when you look at learning upgrade, it's really these three parts. And the first one is going to be the breakthrough app. And that's where the learners will have access to the platform that I just mentioned. All of our English, math, test prep, and job skills is available to every single learner. We don't limit anything. Uh, we don't limit you as an organization. We want to make sure that you have access to everything and also that you can cut down on fragmentation. So you're not trying to adopt four or five different technology tools to do different things. With Learning Upgrade, you're going to be able to address many needs at your program with one app. We teach using songs, video, and games, which is unique. And so we want to meet the learners where they are. They're spending a lot of time consuming bite-sized content, whether that's Instagram stories, uh, shorts on YouTube, TikTok videos, shorter recipe videos on YouTube. Uh, wherever they spend their time, everything seems to be getting smaller and smaller. Uh, they're no longer going and watching 90-minute or 120-minute documentaries. They want things to be quick. So we're not going to meet them all the way at that end, uh, but we do want them to feel like they can learn a lot in a short period of time. So we start all of our lessons with the form of narration, and there's animation and video that goes along with that. After that, for almost every single one of our lessons, we follow up in the form of a song. So the learner is going to get a chance uh, to have that exact same instruction, uh, but in a musical form. And then after that comes the gamification. So then they're going to act, uh, answer practice questions, and it'll have a lot of the you know similar formats of the tests that they're in, uh, drag and drop, multi-click, multiple choice. Uh, but it really helps us bring the content to life and really helps us drive the student engagement, which is going to lead to this term you see here, which is binge learning. And that's our goal. You know, we don't want students to sit you know, and get a 200 page black and white PDF and after one page say, I'm not going to be able to do this. Our goal is to get them to start small, take small chunks of learning, finish that first lesson, which might only take them 10 to 15 minutes, build up their confidence. And before they know it, they're going to be at that 4x learning speed. Um, and you know, really, the binge learning is what drives that. It's time on task. As an instructor, tutor, coordinator, whatever your role may be, you'll have access to our learning management system. And this is where you can track and monitor all student progress, see which courses they're working on, see which areas within a course they're uh, you know, having you know, an easy time with or having difficulties. So we find our learning management system is fantastic for programs that want to scale up. If you're a library or a literacy center that might be struggling with volunteer recruitment, you'll find that our program makes it very easy to onboard 50, 100, 200 learners and keep track of them with a small staff. But even those of you in a more traditional setting uh, at an adult school or community college, you'll see how easy it is for teachers to set up classes, for coordinators and directors to track and monitor multiple teachers, and then for higher level directors to track and monitor multiple sites or even multiple counties across the state. So whatever your needs may be for data, we'll be able to help provide the tools to make that happen. And then finally, it's free to start and affordable to grow. So as I mentioned earlier, every single person that's attending here that's never used Learning Upgrade before will have access to a free pilot. And again, for those of you that already have Learning Upgrade, all you need to do is log into the learning management system and you can add a financial literacy course to your existing students. And when I go into the live demo to show you financial literacy from the browser, I'll also take some time to show you how to do that. Um, if we do have anyone attending today that would like to see it. And if you'd like to see that, if you're a learning upgrade license holder in the chat, just let me know and say that's something that I'd like to see. And then I'll be able to cover that. So very brief resume on us. Uh, we've served 3 million students now. Uh, it's a global solution. I want to say we're in 14 or 15 countries now. Uh, we meet all the state standards and federal standards. So it's not just language acquisition on the English side. Um, it's not just teaching people how to add on the math side. We actually are going to meet all of the, the federal and state required standards there. Everything is in one app as far as the English math test prep and job skills. It's on every web enabled device and we make sure we test it on even the lowest end Android phones. We find, especially for our international deployments, when we're working with refugees 
in Liberia or Kenya or Uganda, we want to make sure that regardless of which phone they have, uh, that learning upgrade will still give them a fantastic learning experience. So we tend not to have those challenges as much in the United States. But for those of you um, that are working with uh, maybe some low income individuals where a household is sharing a lower end Android phone, uh, you don't have to worry about that at all. Learning upgrade will still work well. And then we're X prize winners. And so that was the largest field test ever done for uh, English learning in adult ed, 12,000 students. And after a two year period, we showed the highest CASAS gains um, for our English courses. And then you can see here um, some of our recent deployments in the last year. Most of the programs that come to us, especially internationally, come to us looking for English, for ESL. And then from there, we find that they adopt our other courses. And so that was really common with the refugees is they're, they're highly focused on English. But what do they do when they actually get to full proficiency in English? They start asking for more courses. The students are hungry to learn. And the thing that we hear most from the directors of these programs is that the students love the format of learning upgrades so much that they don't want to switch to anything else. So anytime they want to introduce new courses, they're like, oh, you know what? It's not a learning upgrade course. I'm going to have a, you know, maybe a little bit more of a challenge with that. And that's one of the main reasons behind us launching financial literacy is it's a huge request. You know, in the United States and internationally, one of the largest groups that gets taken advantage of is low income, refugee, new arrival, English learner. Uh, when you look at predatory lending, you look at payday loans, you look at predatory credit cards, you look at scams, they always seem to target these individuals. And so we hear this feedback because we really want to provide all of our our you know, clients for if it's refugee resettlement, students, if you're at traditional education programs with the skills and knowledge to make sure that they don't fall victim um, to these uh, you know, traps, these uh, you know, real, real bad people. And so today we're going to be going over a course and how we are going to provide these individuals with the skills needed um, to avoid that. So before we do it, I want to just do a brief introduction and, you know, description on what is financial literacy only because it's one of those terms where if you ask somebody you know say hey what is financial literacy do you know what it is almost 100 percent of the time people will say yes and then you ask them to describe it and they're at a loss for words it's like yeah maybe I, I know in in principle what it is i have a concept of it but if i was forced to define it i'd have a tough time and so to start out with this course i want to get into an introduction on how we describe it and then also from Lynx, our good buddy, David Rosen, uh, you know, how his program describes it. And so really at its core, it's just the ability and knowledge to understand and demonstrate financial skills. And the key skills that are a part of that are going to be earning, saving, investment, borrowing, budgeting, and asset protection. And everything starts with earning, having a job um, or, you know, finding funds in another way, maybe government provided if you're a new arrival. Not spending all of that, making sure that you're able to, you know, cover your bills, but also have a little bit left over to save. Uh, Long-term thinking on saving is now you're starting to invest. Uh, if you do want to start a business or maybe you're short on earning, then borrowing, you know, and what does borrowing mean? Who are the appropriate people to borrow from? What programs can I use? Uh, what do interest rates mean? Uh, what is a credit card? What is compounding interest? A big part of all of that is budgeting, you know, to make sure that you do have funds allocated for what they need to be allocated for. And then asset protection, you know, so this is more of a, a long term protection thinking. And these principles are going to provide a roadmap for sound money management and also the foundation for a healthy financial future. That can be for an individual, it can be for a couple, and it can be for a family. Financial literacy skills also mean having the confidence, knowledge, and skills needed to make financial decisions. So it's not just enough to have access to a course like uh, financial literacy that we have. What these skills provide an individual is the confidence so that when they do go into a bank or they do go in to negotiate uh, wages for their new job or get set up for, uh, you know, maybe healthcare at their new job, 
or retirement, you know, 401k, that they have not just the knowledge base, but the confidence and skills to promote that self-sufficiency, stability, and then, of course, the long-term well-being, which is really what we're aiming for. And these skills are going to include the ability to effectively locate, you know, so where do I find the uh, financial assets that I'm looking for, evaluate, you know, is this a risky investment? Is this a sound investment? And then use that information, resource, and services to make an informed decision about their, you know, short-term and long-term financial obligations, budgeting, uh, credit, and then of course, you know, debt that comes along with that. If you're looking at buying a house, buying a car, um, starting a business as they plan for the future. So that's a brief description and definition of financial literacy. And I think it's also important to cover, you know, why financial literacy is critical. So you'll see it is a little text heavy. Usually I would do shorter bullet points and then describe them to you. But I found that there's a lot of uh, individuals that will watch these webinars after the fact. And some will just look at the PDF of the slide. So I really wanted to spell it out uh, on the important side of things um, so that they can read this as well. Um, but first and foremost is financial literacy is going to make people with it less vulnerable to fraud. And so that can be Ponzi schemes, predatory lending, high risk investments. I think most of us, you know, over the last few years had at least one or two friends that was hitting us up to invest in crypto. Um, I don't know. There are too many crypto bros in my circle where I say, hey, you got to invest in this. You got to invest in this. Things were starting out at $10,000 or $20,000 a share. All of a sudden they were up at sixty to 70000 And then there's that FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. And they're pushing it hard, pushing it hard, getting everybody to invest. And then all of a sudden, most of those uh, crypto coins were worth zero and people lost their life savings. You know, some put hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and they lost it all. So financial literacy really helps see those scams for what they are. And it's critical that those that are at risk have these skills so that they can assess uh, you know, these opportunities as they're sometimes presented. Number two, financial literacy is going to help people achieve the long-term goals. And so most people, when they start out looking at things that they need to save for, on the short-term side of things, it might be looking for a down payment um, so that they can cover first and last on a rental. From there, it can be maybe saving up for a down payment on a home, um, down payment on a vehicle raising a credit score so that they have access to a vehicle, saving money for their own education, and then of course, saving for the education of their uh, children. Financial literacy is gonna help people navigate all of these systems. And we have lessons on every single one of these topics to provide learners the skills that they need to make sure that they can take that next step for short-term and long-term planning. Another big one is financial products are becoming much more widespread. And so if you were to go back 40, 50 years ago, most transactions were done with cash. And so there's something very tangible about taking a $20 bill out of your wallet, going to the store and getting back change. You actually feel that the money that you worked hard for and you earned was exchanged for a good or a service. And so budgeting is a little bit more visceral there. Nowadays, almost all of our transactions are digital. Uh, you know, for most of us, we use mobile payments. And so if you have Apple Pay or Google Pay or one of those things, you're just clicking a button on your phone and the money is transferred. There's no pain. A lot of the times we don't even see the full price before we go and scan it over the kiosk at the grocery store or the restaurant. And so when they've made transactions so seamless and so frictionless, it becomes that much more important to be aware of what's going on, you know, what's being added, what service fees are being added, how much am I actually paying? And that's only going to continue. Uh, transactions are only going to become more frictionless and more seamless. So it's critical that all of our uh, students, all of our learners, refugees, new arrivals are fully aware of number one, how these systems work, make sure they have access to them but also understand some of the pitfalls of using these um, uh, for their budgeting and their long-term savings. 
Then in 2001, uh, the Federal Reserve reported that only 20% of purchases were made with cash. And so I knew it was changing quickly, but I would have guessed it was maybe 30 or 40%. So this was 21. My guess is that number is probably closer to 15% now. And it's heavily skewed. So when we look at our uh, older generation, they tend to use cash. When we look at younger, they tend to only be digital. Some of them really don't really have a concept of buying anything with cash. And so we can see how quickly things are changing, how important these skills are. Then people with financial literacy are less likely to take unmanageable debt. And so that's something, again, unfortunately ties into the first point on the vulnerability to fraud, Ponzi schemes, predatory lending. Too often, you know, you'll talk to somebody that went in, they needed a car, they needed the car for their job. Uh, they didn't have the credit score needed um, for low payments. And then you find out that the finance department at the car dealership got them locked into a very long-term loan at very high interest rates. And the second they drove the vehicle off the lot, they were underwater. And so it's far too often. So again, you know, financial literacy, uh, understanding debt, understanding credit, understanding compounding interest. This is critical to all of our learners, and we want to make sure that they have these skills because long term, it's going to result in lower levels of bankruptcy. They're going to have higher credit scores. It's going to lower their risk of foreclosure and eviction, and then it's going to lower their risk of tax delinquency. You know, that's another big one. We talk about small business, and a lot of times when somebody starts a small business without financial literacy, they're not accounting for the taxes they're going to have to pay. Uh, it's different. You're not an individual anymore. Um, you're not even, you're not a 1099. You're not a W-2. You know, you have a different level of responsibility, different level of taxes. So it's important that people are aware of that going into a new venture. And then the last one, again, the Federal Reserve uh, found that a quarter of Americans have no retirement savings. So 50% lack the funds to cover three months of wages and 37% don't have 2,000 saved up for an emergency. So of those groups, 43% use payday loans. You know, that's a short stop gap to get the money that they need. Uh, no fault of their own. A lot of the times they're earning uh, is not covering their obligations. And so what they don't always see though, again, it's predatory in a lot of ways. Not sure how it's even legal in most cases, but extremely high interest rates on the payday loans. Um, they'll utilize things like pawn shops where they're giving away some of their high valuable uh, possessions for short term cash and then other expensive financial services, high interest rate credit cards. I already talked about the high interest rate long term uh, car loans um, in 2008. Everybody, unfortunately, became very aware of the adjustable rate mortgages um, with no money down that a lot of people were trapped in. And so again, you see across the, the spectrum here, just how important financial literacy is. So, you know, what's our answer to that at Learning Upgrade? Now, you're gonna see all of our lessons on the next one, but just as we break down the subject areas, number one, we wanna focus on planning. And so planning is gonna be short-term and long-term. So to start out with your earnings, setting budgets, start plan, uh, you know, finances across every domain in your life, uh, college, things like that. Earning, so what kind of job types can you have? Um, you know, things that a lot of people take for granted, something like receiving wages. Uh, if you're receiving uh, 1099, W-2, cash, if you have two or three jobs, pay stubs, insurance, deductions for health care and social security and things like that. Then there's spending. So a cash transaction is just a like-for-like -like, uh, exchange credit cards where there's interest involved, mobile payments, rent versus a mortgage, insurance, what does that cover? What am I paying into? Things like savings. So bank accounts, unfortunately, even though interest rates and inflation keep going up, uh, saving interest rates haven't gone up as much as they should. Um, some banks are starting to correct for that. Uh, investment, so long-term, short-term, we have the stock market and equity markets. We have fixed income securities, that's going to be more of the bond market, and then retirement, so mutual funds um, and things on that side. Then there's borrowing, 
So we have loans, uh, you know, buying a car, buying a home, financing for college, and then small business. So what does it mean to you know start conceptualizing your business, uh, bookkeeping and accounting, financials? How do I make people aware of my business? Do I have sales and marketing, uh, social media? Uh, where do I go to make people aware of what it is I do? And small business is not something that a lot of financial literacy courses cover, but it is critical. Um, you know, it's amazing to see how many inspiring entrepreneurs there are um, across all age groups, but especially in the younger groups. A lot of them start out on social media. Um, they're passionate about certain ideas, passionate about their art, passionate about their music. Um, they're creating physical goods. Um, they're wanting to sell different things. So it's important that they have the skills and the knowledge base if they do have a passion for small business um, to get started there. So here you can see we start out with finance basics, and that's just going to be a general overview of finance to get them started. Then we're going to go over the basics of earning, spending, saving, and budgeting. Once they start earning money, they start saving money, then they're going to want to put it somewhere, so they'll go to bank accounts. And again, it's something that, you know, maybe a lot of us take for granted the concept of a bank account, but a lot of our, our low income uh, learners, um, a lot of our undocumented learners, a lot of refugees, they actually don't have bank accounts. When they go to work, they're being paid in cash or they're taking their check directly to bank. Uh, the bank is usually taking a percentage cut since they're not members there and then they get their cash and it goes into a general fund, into a wallet, um, directly out to pay bills. But a lot of our, our, our learners don't have a concept of a bank account. So that's something, seems like a simple lesson, but it's really critical for those, um, and especially as they start accumulating uh, money, that it's you know FDIC backed, um, that they have a place they can go to access those funds, that it's safe and secure. Um, then we get into borrowing. So that's gonna be loans and interest understanding what interest is, what interest does. I'm sure all of us that have houses, credit cards, anybody that borrowed money for college um, is all too familiar with that. Um, there's credit basics. And so what is a credit score? When I go and look for a car and they do a hard credit check on me, what does that do to my credit score? If I pay my bill on time, what does that do to my credit score? It's important they understand their credit score because if they do want access to funds to start a business, to get a car, to get a house, that really matters, um, especially when we cover you know, how that impacts an interest rate. Mobile payments and mobile finance, again, those are two more modern lessons, but the way finance is going, almost everything we do is mobile now. And so it's important that they have a very sound grasp there. Then we get into work benefits, you know, making sure if somebody's transitioning from maybe a cash paid job uh, or it's their first time at an established company that they understand what's available there. Uh, same thing with insurance. Then we get into the big life decisions. So buy a home, renting a home, buying a vehicle, financing college. And then we're gonna get into the investment. So investing in stocks and bonds, retirement savings, then the small business lessons that I talked about. So we start out with just small business basics. And then we get, we get to registering your business, sales and marketing. So how do we make people aware of the business idea that we have? Um, how do we pick a good business name? You know, if I'm going to be getting into business with an app like Learning Upgrade, it's important that the name of the company is in line with what we're trying to do. And so if I named, you know, I like cold brew coffee, if Learning Upgrade was named Cold Brew, it's a cool name, says nothing about the company, and it would actually be a terrible name uh, for a learning app. But again, these are some things that we might take for granted, but maybe an individual that's just wanting to start business, they've always had a dream, for whatever reason they like the name, it's important we cover every angle of this to optimize their chances of success. Funding the business, going over the financial statements and record keeping, Accounting is critical. Uh, anybody that's ever worked in accounting, worked in a company close to accounting and bookkeeping, you'll know how just one invoice being off um, can have the IRS looking at you a little more closely than you'd ever want. So we wanna make sure that they start out with the fundamentals there. Debt repayment, making sure that they're on schedule. Again, that back into our credit score down in uh, 
lessons eight and nine, then the financial planning, moving into income taxes, and then the newer financial technology. And then lesson 30, that's going to be a cumulative test of everything they learn. So they're one through 29, they're all new topics. And then we want to give them a chance to take everything that they learned and have the only timed component of the course in the five challenge where they'll answer questions based on the entirety of financial literacy and go on from there. So our approach to financial literacy is a little bit different than others, but really what makes it powerful is that it's tied into the full learning upgrade ecosystem here. So these are 30 brand new financial literacy lessons, but in order to get started with financial literacy, there's some fundamental and foundational math skills that learners need. So the fantastic thing is Learning Upgrade has your students covered there. They can take a math assessment, they'll get placed in the appropriate Learning Upgrade math course if they do need it, and they can build up their skills and they're ready to work on things like budgeting, interest rates, and the other skills in financial literacy. The same for English. Uh, so for our financial literacy, an NRS level five is required just to cover the complexity of the topics that are in this course. No problem if they're not there yet. Again, they can take an English assessment, we'll place them in the appropriate English course, and they can work their way up to NRS 5. The fantastic thing is we have great reports that'll show you in real time how your students are progressing through both English and or math if they need it. As soon as they get to that NRS 5, you can enroll them into our skills courses and they'll be off and running. It's also designed for the financial literacy of tomorrow. So unfortunately, a lot of existing products that are on the market are for financial literacy of like five or 10 years ago, which is okay. You know, it's gonna cover a lot of the fundamentals. So again, when we're talking about the, the skills of earning, budgeting, saving, those are, are tried and true, and those aren't gonna change that much. But when we get into more of the mobile finance, the mobile payments, the small business, those are relevant today. And so those are things that your students that are maybe on Instagram, seeing somebody that's flipping houses, and then another person that's getting into, um, you know, one of the other popular social media, small business ideas, and there are a lot of them out there, that they can go to Learning Upgrade and feel like the content's relevant to them today. Uh, and that's, that's hugely important because it's not gonna be a gap between the two. They're going to be swiping out of their social media app. They're going to be going into learning upgrade uh, as they thumb through their phone. And it's going to feel like the perfect transition as we're preparing them for the ambition that they felt on the, whatever they were inspired by as they jumped through TikTok. Students can also learn at their own pace and at their own time. So it can be one in the morning, two in the morning. It doesn't really matter when they're feeling inspired and when they have the time to learn. They can jump on learning upgrade, launch this course, and it'll be self-paced um, at their own time. As I mentioned, it includes the final tests. Students can repeat these lessons to mastery. And so a lot of the times, you know, with finance, it takes multiple attempts to really grasp it. Um, I was a finance undergrad, and I remember there were a lot of times when we're going through, you know, for uh, an entire session, an entire uh, semester on fixed income securities. Sometimes I'd have to read a chapter three or four times to really grasp it. So for our learners who are you know, being exposed to credit and interest rates and mortgages and how credit scores work for the first time, this is fantastic for them because they can go back and play the instruction, play the song, play the games over and over again until their skills are where they need to be. So with that, I'm gonna switch over to the browser now and we're gonna be able to take a live look at our demo. And so let me just do a quick switch over to Chrome. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like uh, for your students. If you've never seen Learning Upgrade before, once they have an account, they'll log in. They'll have a username, password, and school ID. Select your course to there, get started. They're going to see their lessons. 
So if they're starting out with English or math for the first time, again, they're gonna get a quick assessment before they're placed in these courses. For this demo version, I have access to everything. You'll see here at the bottom in our skills, that's where you'll find financial literacy. So we'll launch that course and you'll see our full 30 lesson map here. So what we'll do now is just play a brief demo. Um, I'll show you two or three lessons so you'll get a chance to see what the instruction looks like and then we'll go through some practice questions. Financial planning is something you need to do all through your life so you have the money you need to reach your goals. You can do this yourself or hire a professional financial planner to help you. Short-term planning helps you save money for health emergencies, travel, or losing a job. You need an emergency fund in a savings account that you can withdraw quickly. For example, if you have to travel quickly to visit a relative who is sick, your savings will enable you to do this. Try to reach six months worth of expenses in a savings account. Long-term planning helps you invest money for your retirement, a college education for... And the nice thing with all of our lessons, it's a lot of information, a lot of it's new, but just like YouTube or Netflix, they can always stop, they can scrub, they can go back 10 seconds. And we also have an online notebook. So you'll see here, I already have it started, but you can work across multiple courses. So I have my course name, Financial Literacy. I'm working on financial planning. And then I can plug in any notes to help me remember. Um, so that's available for free to all of our programs. Uh, but again, you know, you can scrub and this is mobile um, or a browser. So to save some time, I'm going to skip through the end of the instruction here. We'll go to the song and then we'll go to the gamified practice questions. Let's plan your finances. 50, 30, 20, got to spend your okay. money wisely. 50, 30, 20, got to spend your money wisely. Take 50% of what you earn and spend it on what you need. Like paying for your car and your home and your bills and your food and your groceries. Then 30% of what you earn goes into what you want. Like entertainment, buying clothes or fancy restaurants. The last 20% is set aside for your financial goals. Savings for an emergency fund, pay debts and investments, now you're done. 50, 30, 20, got to spend your money wisely. 50, 30, 20, got to spend your money wisely. Yeah. Read the question about financial planning and choose the best answer. All right, 50, 30, 20. So by how much does Orva need to reduce his need spending? And so we can see his needs here on a monthly budget of 4,000. 50% of that um, would be the budget of 2,000 and he spent $200 more than he should have. Um, so in this case, we'll get it wrong just so you can see what the instant back remediation looks like. Uh, but this is how you would answer the question. So it really gets your learners, you know, mentally prepared for creating and planning, which we cover in other lessons, putting together a budget, you know, what does this look like, putting it down on paper, um, or if they're in our, uh, working on this simultaneously with our digital literacy course, we'll teach them about things like Excel and Google Sheets so that they'll understand how to create spreadsheets um, to do their budgets here. Um, so here we'll get it wrong and you can get a feel for that. Nope. Since his needs spending goal is $2,000 and his actual expenses are $2,200, he should reduce his spending by $200. So you'll see that instant feedback and remediation is critical. You know, for a learner who is getting their first exposure to financial literacy, the last thing you want to do is send them home with a static workbook. They're reading through it. They're going through and filling things out. And if they get it wrong, they have no clue until it's graded the next day, the next week, maybe not at all. Uh, if they do get answers, they might get the odd answers in the back of the book. 
but it's really hard to stay motivated when you're not getting feedback in real time. So you'll see how the tutors built into learning upgrade. If they do get it wrong, it's not just skipping to the next question and throwing something more difficult at them. They instantly get to see, okay, I did get it incorrect, but this is where these numbers are coming from. That's where that 200 is coming from. You saw the arrow point out exactly where the actual spending was versus the budget. And then we can scale it back and give them an easier question as they work their skills up to full proficiency. So that was financial planning. Next one, I'll do one um, just very briefly since we're a little short on time for credit basics. Brief intro on the lesson, and then we'll move to the practice questions before we jump back to the slides. Your credit rating tells banks how much you are trusted to pay back the money that you borrow. If you have good credit, you are more likely to pay the money back and it will be easier to borrow from banks. If you have bad credit, it will be harder to borrow money. When you apply for a loan or a credit card, the bank checks your credit score and annual income to see whether you are likely to pay back what you borrow. If either of these are too low, the application can be denied. If you opened too many bank accounts recently, this can be seen as a sign of bad credit and prevent you from being approved. If you are under 21, you may need to apply with a co-signer, such as a parent. Okay, we're gonna skip ahead and just take a look at the practice questions. But again, uh, with a free pilot or an existing license, you can go through and take a look at all of these lessons in full. As time passes, this person's credit details will change. Look at what has changed each month and answer the following question. So credit score dropped, late card payment That's will do that it? to you. Here's a new one. So the full balance is paid off. And so we see we got an increase. Good. Answer this question. Nope. Since Reese paid less than the minimum, she will have to pay interest and her credit score will decrease. So this is a fantastic lesson for learners to see how credit scores move across time. It's not static and it also makes it so it's not so demoralizing if they're starting out with a low credit score. They can see that by taking small steps and making the right decision on these, these credit challenges early, that in time they can actually move their credit score up to where they need it to be and they can take those next steps in their life. Um, so it's just a fantastic lesson to get them thinking about credit scores, how they can improve their credit score, and then also how to avoid the pitfalls of certain decisions that will make their credit score go down. So with that, I'm going to go back to the slides here and just briefly cover um, the deployment models. So again, you know, this really is more going to be covered for those that have licenses and pilots. We do a follow-up training. Um, we also have online documentation to help you get started. Um, but just for those that are wondering, you know, what the app can do, um, again, it doesn't matter if your students are starting out pre-literate, refugees, new arrivals, English learners. Our English works for anybody. We work with refugee centers and new arrivals at adult ed programs. Um, across the globe. We work with refugee centers here, um, you know, almost five or 6,000 with focus humanitarian assistance with Afghan refugees, improving their English skills, getting them placed into vocational training, upskilled in our digital finance and work life skills. As I mentioned, learners have access to all of the courses. Every single one of these courses, we record over 10,000 pieces of audio you got to see some of that feedback and remediation for the questions that I got wrong. Every single one of the questions is that way. Every single one of them, it doesn't matter when they're working, how many questions they're going through, they'll always feel like the tutor, uh, tutor or teacher is right there with them. It's bite-sized, so learners can work when it fits into their schedule, even if they only have 10 or 15 minutes. And we find that that's what's gonna drive the binge learning and accelerate their growth. Each one of our courses that's 60 lessons, that's the English and math, 
you're going to be looking at an average of 25 hours to complete, um, you know, anywhere uh, from maybe 10 to 20 minutes per lesson. And so for the students that are working through our skill courses, it's going to be less. Those are 30 lessons per. And there we're going to see 12 to 15 hours. So that's on average what it will take them to finish an entire course. We took a look at the demo, so we don't need to go through um, how the instruction looks since you got a chance to see that. But again, just to uh, you know, cap off the demo, everything starts out with the instruction. Then we have the memorable songs that help the learners take that information and, and keep it with them every single day. And then they have the gamified practice questions. So what I didn't cover in the demo is you'll see that big zero at the top. Students have to earn 100 points per lesson. And the difficulty of the game will determine the increment of points. So something pretty easy might be three to five points. Something more complex could be 10, 15, even 20 points. Once they get 100 points, then we'll look at the percentage that they got correct. So 95 or better will be a gold star, 90 is silver, and then 75% is bronze. If they get below 75%, we're going to ask them to play the lesson again. And again, it's that repetition to mastery. We want them to continue to move up, um, start out with the bronze if that's where they are, and then eventually to silver and gold. And then once they get gold on all of the lessons, that's when they earn their gold certificate and can move on to the next course. So if students get logged in, they say, I'd really like to do financial literacy, work-life skills, citizenship. With four hours a week, doesn't even matter if they're at that NRS1, they can very quickly get up to five. And again, everything is in this full track. So they can go from basic all the way up to our job skills. It might take 350 hours, but if you break it down, that's less than an hour a day for a year. So you can see how quickly they can get through life-changing instruction with just one app. And then our learning management system won't cover too much today, but teachers can get in there, create classes, track and monitor student progress. We have things localized in uh, different languages, eight languages now. And so it's very easy for students to get started. We have uh, progress tracking that'll show every single session the students are logging. We also have full uh, reports on everything else. So for those of you that join the WhatsApp group, you'll get a feel for learning circles. You can get these set up for your class as well. You'll find that for um, you know, your, most of your learners, especially for new arrivals, English learners, low income, 100% use WhatsApp because it's free and it works fantastic on every phone. So if you're not utilizing WhatsApp for instruction, I would I encourage you to take a look at it and we do provide training on that. We also provide training on getting WhatsApp community set up uh, with the community with that link that I put in the chat, or if you scan this QR code, it'll place you into a webinar WhatsApp learning circle. And that way you can get a feel for what that's like. Again, you can scan the QR code or you can click the link um, if you'd like to get a feel for that. Or when you fill out the pilot form, just uh, request some training on WhatsApp and we'd be more than happy to provide that for you. I'll also provide access to that notebook that I showed you in the browser. If your students would like to print this off or fill it in online. And with that, um, I encourage you to sign up for the pilot. And to close, I'm actually going to have them come on to talk about the companion print. So control your money from New Readers Press. It's a fantastic print uh, book that will go in tandem with the app. And so with that, um, is it OK to hand it over to you, Dan? Sure. Okay. I'll be happy to share my screen here in a moment. Thank you, Drew. And uh, not only Drew, but uh, Panin, Vinod, thanks for joining us today. I know you are standing by, ready to take questions. And the the problem with uh, when Drew presents, he does such a good job, there are there are no questions. <laughs> it covers everything. Um, this is the uh, New Readers Press website. And I've, I've, I went ahead and I jumped onto the learning upgrade page. But when you first go to the website, you'll see our homepage and you can scroll up here at the top, digital solutions, and then go around and click on learning upgrade and you'll come to this page. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this page, a couple of reasons. First, did you know, you maybe you didn't, there are uh, some companion workbooks that go along with 
uh, the couple of the learning upgrade courses that Drew was just sharing. Uh, there's one for the work life skills course. There is one for the digital literacy course. Uh, there's even a teacher's guide for that one. Uh, if you click on any of those books, any book that we have, you can look inside and see more. I'm going to show you that in a minute. To learn more about Learning Upgrade, you actually click on this icon and then you get a lot more information. But when you scroll down, you even have more. You have free resources down here and correlations to the standards, some support videos and some support information. Under those uh, free resources, you're going to find things like the placement chart, uh, crosswalks uh, between uh, Learning Upgrade and some other things that we offer, user's guides, um, those kinds of things. So it, it's very useful information. Be sure to check it out. Drew mentioned specifically a book called Control Your Money. So let me just take and drop this in the chat real quick here. Give me one second. This is the link to Control Your Money. Okay, so now that's in the chat. And the same thing is true here. You, uh, uh, If you click on the book right here, look inside, you're going to be able to not see everything, but you're going to be able to see a little bit. Let's take a look just at the table of contents to give you an idea um, what's in this book. So getting control of your money, tracking your spending, figuring your income, your expenses, making a spending plan and making money decisions, banking, checking, savings, and how you monitor those accounts. Uh, why use credit? How do you get credit? Credit cards, loans, debt, insurance, investing, things like that is what you're going to find in here. And um, I also wanna show you too, that if you're on any one of our pages and you scroll to the bottom, you can say, hey, I'd like a sample. You can click here and just fill out this and under the title, you can just write in control your money and then fill out that information and submit. Also, uh, with requesting a sample or learning more about control your money, learning more about financial literacies, uh, the financial literacy course from Learning Upgrade or any other course from Learning Upgrade, you know, it's, it's great to talk to your sales rep right here at the very top. Find your new Reader's Press representative right up here. They're listed alphabetically. Um, and and uh, yeah, I, I Drew, I think that's about everything that I wanted to share uh, with our folks today. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for attending today. Again, I encourage you all to sign up for a learning upgrade pilot. Um, and then also Gary mentioned in the chat. Yes, thank you. Uh, you know, that New Readers Press provides fantastic support and follow up. And so it isn't one of these things where you fill out the pilot and then boom, that's it, you know, figure it out on your own. Um, no, any questions that you have, any training that you need, really anything um, that we can do to help you, just reach out, let us know. Um, we'll also be following up and reaching out to you. So fill out that pilot form or fill out the contact form on the Reader's Press website if you have additional questions that you would like to have answered before you take that next step. And uh, we'd all be more than happy to support you in that process. Um, but other than that, thank you for attending and uh, have a great week. Thanks, everyone.